Okay, so this is PokerTools.com. Uh, it's a site that allows you to, for free, run equity analyses on the following games here. Hold'em, Omaha High, Omaha High Low, Raz, which is 7 stud low, uh, stud high and stud high and low. What you can do is here, go to syntax, and you basically get, um, yeah, exactly how, yeah, how you're to enter this information, your hand ranges into these different fields. You can add more hands here, and then you run a simulation. You can also run graphs, counts, uh, the rank of your hands, uh, unroll it, just gives you the whole breakdown from pre-flop to post-flop. Yeah, and that's how basically Ace-King performs against tens in the long run. So pre-flop, Ace-King is an underdog, 43%. Uh, on the flop, right, when you do hit that king, you're already at uh, 88%. This is showing you an example of these quite enormous equity swings from pre-flop to post-flop. Um, that would be a hold'em scenario. Let's look at Omaha High, for example. Let's just run... Uh, that's... Uh, in Omaha, that's the absolute nuts that you can get, actually, if you pull too suited. Uh, and let's do the nuts versus just a rundown hand, for example. Uh, ten of hearts, nine of hearts, eight of diamonds, seven of diamonds. Okay. So this is the absolute nuts versus a two-suited rundown hand. Uh, details on that are covered in, uh, in the Omaha videos. Now, you see here, in Omaha, of course, there's not this enormous... Um, equity advantage pre-flop. Even with the nuts against that hand, you're only at, you know, 20% equity advantage. Um, if you unroll that without the flop, let's see here. I can see you actually have to add a, add a flop. Um, you know, you can type that in at your leisure. Again, just have a look at the, the syntax here for Omaha, and it'll give you uh, this breakdown underneath. Yeah, it shows you how you can enter different, uh, different hands. Ace-Ace with the two stars, for example, just any ace and two other hands, or two other cards as your whole cards, and that's how that works out. Uh, seven stud high. Let's take a door card of ace versus your, um, say you're rolled up in seven stud. You rolled up against that door card ace, you know, that's going to put you at 91% in 7 stud high. Uh, let's run that same thing in 7 stud high low, right, where the ace can be high and low. And the equity is, of course, markedly different, although you're still looking good with that 82%. Okay, so this is how you can play with the site. It's very, very useful, especially for you Omaha players out there and you 7 stud players. It takes, it takes a bit of learning. You need to yeah, work with it, practice it a little bit, but it's definitely worth your time if you are looking into those games. Uh, this site, as I just mentioned, um, PokerHand.org, you can I've just put uh, a tournament hand up here. It was Ace Queen, and bubble in a MTT qualifier for 100 seats, uh, over 1,750 entrants. And I think we're down to like 100, yeah, 110 here. Um, 20 players had similar stack sizes. Yeah, and I was yeah looking. These 20 guys were around five to ten big blinds. So I'm dealt uh, suited Ace Queen on the button and then run into Ace King. Right, and that's how that worked out. So uh, it shows you the action, right? It shows you what went down, uh, what the pot size was. Uh, you can check your odds here. Yeah, and that just shows you that. And it's also got this replay that I had just mentioned to you guys. There it is. Okay, so just, um, just a few options to show you guys how uh, by the certain resources you have online that you can actually check out at your leisure again. Uh, this Hold'em Resources.net, this is for uh, tournament play, and it's based on the independent chip modeling uh, Nash calculator. All right? um, the way this works, actually this, this site and the following site here, this ICM Poker uh, Calculator, these two sites are covered in great detail in the tournament uh, video series, and that you should definitely have a look at. So what I'll just do is just touch on this now, since this is the uh, Poker Math kind of overview, so to say. Um, concerning equity. In tournaments, of course, as many of you well know, the chip expected value. That right, means the uh, expected value you have just based on your stack size is not one-to-one -one with the monetary payout. 
Right. It's very much dependent on the payout structure, the type of game, type of tournament, um, and multiple other factors. This independent chip modeling system attributes monetary value based on the tournament payout in accordance with your stack size, irrespective of skill level, and also irrespective of uh, distance from the blinds. So, um, again, in the tournament video section, this is covered in great detail, but just to give you guys an idea and just to let you... I'll give you the URL and let you check this out. You basically enter the big blind here, uh, the small blind here, the antes, uh, the payout structure being uh, 20% here, 13%, all the way down to 10, and then down to 5.9%. Uh, with this with this calculator, you can only do up to five places. Right? You enter the total chip stacks of the remaining players, then you come down here to calculate. And what this gives you is quite amazing. Something that yeah, you won't be able to calculate in your head at the tables by any means. But it basically, yeah, you can pause the video right here actually if you want. It gives you the player under the gun, cut off the button, the small blind, the big blind. Uh, the level, small, big, and the antes. Okay, the structure, that's a payout structure. The remaining players is five. And yeah, that's how it breaks down. With the stack sizes, the push percentages, this is the equity prior to posting the blinds, equity uh, after posting blinds, after the hand, given this breakdown underneath, and the equity difference. Okay, and the equity in terms, of course, is the monetary equity, a monetary EV, which again is not one to one with necessarily with your stack size. What this site does, uh, which this site does not do, is give you uh, Nash push, call, and overcall ranges. Nash, as we had covered very briefly in um, in the video on game theory. And the situation, Nash push, Nash call, Nash over call, is calling based on ranges, based on optimal game theory. Uh, in this situation, you're under the gun, let's say you're the, the big stack here with this uh, total stack size. You should be pushing open from under the gun with 43.9% 40, of all hands. That is a hell of a, hell of a wide range, right? Um, given that constellation, okay? so. Under the gun should push with this range of hands. If the hand is not on that list, you fold it. Under the gun pushes, the cutoff, based on this stack size, should call only with jacks of better. Only. Uh, if the under the gun pushes, the cutoff calls, the button should only overcall with aces. Small blind the same, and the button maybe with kings of better. That's how that breaks down. If the under, gun, under the gun pushes, the cutoff then folds. It comes down to the next guy, which is then the button, and he should then be calling against that push range with tens of better or ace king suited. All right, so under the gun pushes open with this range, which is very, very broad, as you see here. Uh, and sometimes this might look, for some of you who are new to this, might look quite crazy. Um, this king four, for example, offsuit should be an open push from under the gun versus four players. Um, but he is a chip leader, right, and he's, he's facing these stack sizes. And this is very mathematically sound. So it looks may look funny, you know, but this is this is how it should be done. This is perfect mathematical play. That being said, not everybody plays like that, so it's not necessarily optimal optimal play in the meaning of uh, your return on investment, but it's not exploitable. All right, so under the gun pushes like this, um, cut off folds, button folds, small blind should then call with nines a better ace king, and it moves all the way down. So if under the gun then folds. You know, say for example, he didn't get a hand that was on this 40, 44 percent range. Um, he folds. The cutoff then should push open with 45 percent, which is represented as this range. That moving on down, you know, when the cutoff pushes, the button should then call with this all the way down to the bottom. And you guys can pause the video there at, at any given point, just kind of have a, a look at what what is meant with all the different terms. And like I said, I mean, this is all covered in great detail in the tournaments. Uh, section. Okay, the ICM calculator here, this is based also on a very large multi-table tournament. Uh, final table scenario where you've got this following payout. 20% right? for first, respective stack sizes, okay, and that's based on prize pool percentages. You can also have a look here at the place. And that's again the uh, probability of ending up in that place. Right? So this guy at this point, you know, he's got a 27% chance of making it um, into the first place spot based on that stack size. And again, uh, the assumption here is, you know, there's there's no regard for distance from the blind. 
and there's no uh, calculation for difference in skill level. So the assumption is that everybody plays exactly the same. Uh, we already had a look at this. Uh, sit and go wizard. Uh, just have a look at that site. It's um, it is super important, especially for anybody who actively plays sit and goes. Um, it basically gives you um, the ICM yeah push fold ranges for any given scenario, and then it links up actually with, um, for example, Holder Manager and other uh, online poker tracking tools. Again, it's so super important if you're a, a serious sit and go player. Um, there are other calculators. Actually, there are certain trainers that um, that you can either purchase or uh, get via affiliates for uh, working on your in-game play in tournaments, your push-fold phase of those tournaments. And that, yeah, that's essentially what Sit and Go Wizards about. There's, I believe, a 30-day free trial on that. And if you are looking into tournament play, definitely check that out uh, when you get a chance.